Hello and welcome everybody. I'm delighted to introduce Mary Butler, who I have known for quite some time now, would actually I would call a friend. Uh, so welcome Mary, how are you today? Good, thanks Meg, great to be here. Thank you for joining us today and for generously donating your book to the Lockdown Library. Um, the Lockdown Library is really just a free resource where people can access some amazing books at no cost. Um, and just a big thank you to all of the authors who have kindly donated their books to the library. And the great news is version four is coming out very soon. So we've had even more authors contact us. So that's great news. Now, Mary, you describe yourself as a people strategy expert. So tell us what that means. Yeah, thanks, Meg. Um, a people strategy expert is somebody who works with, um, I suppose in my space, I work with existing teams within organizations and my particular focus is with startups, mm -hmm. uh, working with the existing team to ensure that we've got the right people in the right place with the right capability, experience and attitude. Um, so the, it's, it's essentially org design um, and making sure that you have all those right people with the right personalities and skills and capabilities but also the infrastructure that's needed to support them in those roles. Um, and so it's the full holistic end-to-end -end piece. Yeah. yeah. So when you talk about resources, what, what the infrastructure, what, what's that yeah. looking at? Yeah, sure. So quite, quite often, um, as we know, people will have, say, a career conversation um, with their manager, and then they just don't know what to do with the information. So it's about having the development opportunities within the organization or having mentor programs set up or it might be um, funding. A lot of organizations don't have enough funding to support people to do any formal development, but it's looking at all of those other on-the-job learnings that um, people can learn from as well and helping them recognize that this is part of their development. It's not always um, sending somebody off on a course. So mm -hmm. that infrastructure in place where people recognize what is development and how can I develop? And it might be a cross-functional project that people get an opportunity to work on or even to mentor um, an intern in a business as well. All of those development opportunities form part of that infrastructure. Yeah, and is that something that you see is getting more important now, that, that development in roles? Is that what people are looking for? Absolutely. And I think, you know, the um, the traditional build it and they will come of universities is shifting a lot because quite often by the time we get to the end of a university degree, a lot of it's quite out of date. And particularly in that startup space as well, it's um, you do have people who are very highly technically um, capable and that's required in many areas. But there's also um, technology itself is moving so quickly. So being able to develop quickly, um, get new learnings, um, learn on the job is uh, really, really critical for them. Mm -hmm. And outside of the technical capability as well, it's obviously the behavioral capabilities are really important for people as well. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of that can come from, um, you know, experiencing really good behaviors or working with a mentor who can help develop them as well. Yeah, fantastic. Now you're actually um, a two times author, so you've kindly donated one of your books, uh, Recreate Your Career Story, which we'll talk about in a minute. That's the book that's in the library. But I know that you're actually writing your second book. Is that right? Scalable People? Yes, yeah, Scalable People. And this really is as we described. So it's working with people within an organization. And as I said, I work with startups and scale ups. Um, so high growth organizations who um, need to ensure that you have the right people within your business who can scale with you. So a scalable business is one that uh, responds quickly to the needs of um, the changing market and the, the demands of that market. And a scalable person in a similar uh, way is somebody who can expand rapidly, they can um, shift their thinking quickly, they, they're quite powerful and robust, and so they don't need stability. They're people who can... Um, they're essentially anti-fragile and um, can, can scale with the business and help the business to scale as well. Um, I guess, yeah. I was going to say, at the moment with COVID, there's nothing more important than having that flexibility and that scalability and being able to shift the way that we're working. Yeah, so true, because we have many people... Um, the nature of startups, I guess, is they can't afford people a lot of the time who have capability, experience, knowledge, you know, overseas experience, all of those things. Um, and very highly technical or ca um, technically capable people are hired in, but they may not always have the experience. They're quite young. 
um, in a lot of cases as well. And that's sometimes you, they have no life experience or so something like COVID that we've experienced recently, um, or they've never experienced a recession which we have, we would know, <laughs> um, have, having arrived in Australia, that's something that we've experienced previously. But um, these are things that is uh, really quite challenging to people who've never experienced it previously. And so scalable people are people who can take that on and adapt to it quickly mm -hmm. and also help others adapt. So scalable leaders are even probably even more important. Yeah. And so scalable, the book, where did that idea come from? Um, so I've been working more recently, as I said, in this startup space and in the scale-up space. And um, I think people quite often thought that I was a recruitment person or trying to always um, grow their business by hiring in, in new talent. And really what I want to do is work with the existing capability and talent within, within mm -hmm. these businesses to help them recognize who they have already and develop internally. And as I say, put those infrastructures in place so that if you have people with the potential to grow and to, to lead and to become scalable, that you have that um, built into the business itself. And it's being careful as well that um, as some of those businesses grow, they tend to shift people into positions. They're kind of saying, oh, you know, you're, you're good at marketing, so you can be our social media person. And you know, you're also quite technical, you can be our help desk person. And they just kind of get shoved around a lot. And it's really understanding what are people's actual ability, what's um, their engagement with the business as well. So how committed are they to the future of this, this uh, particular business, but also what's their aspiration? So do they want to be this person who's a jack of all trades? Do they want to really dig into a particular technical um, capability? Um, are they somebody who wants to be a people leader? So really understanding who do we have? And who are the people who want to grow and how do we ensure that we can support them in that growth within the business? So it's funny, it links a lot to the careers um, piece as well. So um, it is kind of it's internal careers within within the business. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it just seems like that would make good financial sense when you think about the cost of recruiting. Yeah. It makes good financial sense to actually find the great people you've already got and, and make sure. the best of those. Absolutely. And you're actually hiring to fill an actual gap. Um, that hasn't been able to be filled internally and you know we've all experienced we've been in, in organizations where you see a role somebody gets hired into it and you're going god I wouldn't wouldn't have mind a, a, a chance at that or that would have been a great opportunity for me but that gap wasn't either advertised or our managers never had that aspirational conversation with us and I know really we are responsible for our own development and having that conversation ourselves but the culture of the business needs to be such that those conversations are um, fluid and regular and it's a good rhythm about having mm. those conversations. So what is it that you want to do? And this is coming up, but is that something you'd like to do? And maybe trial it, shadow somebody in the role, work on a project in that area and fill those kind of gaps. So rather than, as you say, um, investing in hiring somebody in, getting them up to speed, um, onboarding them, getting them across all of the systems and then realizing they're actually not a good fit for the business. Mm. It's much better off looking internally to see who you have and who works. And um, it, sounds as, yeah. it, it sounds as though it would fix a problem that I see regularly when I, I spend a lot of time working with people in quality who often get the role because they're breathing. Yeah. Not, <laughs> not, because, yeah. not because the organization is really clear on what they need for that role but just because you've been here the longest or you're very capable at what you already do so they shift into quality and generally they do a fantastic job but it's hard because they're learning on the hop if you like so it yeah. sounds like this approach would really rectify that problem as well oh so true and this is a perfect example with founders they're quite often very technical um, and they're a particular behavioral and personality type. And I'm, I know I am generalizing, but um, they have a quite often a very clever technical idea, but what they're not necessarily experienced at is people leadership. Mm. And so some of the work I do is helping those founders transition to CEO um, helping them in, and, and helping them recognize in some cases you're actually not CEO material and all the work that we can do with you is never going to actually get you to that role but also many of them just want to be client facing they want to talk about their product or their idea or their innovation and and they're finding oh god there's all this people stuff 
and now I have to be inspirational today and I have to, you know, talk <laughs> about like budgets and, and it's maybe not their thing. So, yeah. but there's such a fear of letting go. It's a fear of letting go of their baby. You know, they, it's their thing. And, but if they really think about it, right. And do the, the, the work um, in the background to make sure that they're hiring the right CEO in and take your time. I think that's really critical actually is taking your time with all of this and not rushing. I think people rush too quickly with um, any kind of people decisions. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it sounds as though that kind of links nicely to the book that is in the library, which is recreate, <laughs> recreate your career story. So tell us about that book. What, what made you write that book and who is it for? Sure. And so I should explain, I'm not holding the other one from you and just <laughs> saying you can't have it. It's just, it's just not ready yet. Once it's ready, you'll have it. It'll be absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're not having that one i see how you go with this one first that's right you have to write it first i understand <laughs> finished it first um yeah so recreate your career story which i do have and of course my little, my tagged version this came about really i suppose i spent 25 years in corporate working in mostly talent management and learning and development and there's such a gap in career capability development within businesses and there's a fear of conversation. The leaders are afraid to have the conversation because they're saying, what if I give the wrong advice? I set somebody off on the wrong path. What if I promise them something they can't have it? What if they want a promotion and I can't deliver it? So quite often leaders just avoid the conversation. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, we're all responsible for our own development. And what I wanted to do was produce something for individuals that they could actually reflect on their own career to date and see what works and what doesn't work. So the idea behind the book is that it's, I say it's for individuals. It's not um, how to use LinkedIn, do interviews, it's, it's, um, or CVs or any of that. This is a really reflective book and it, it helps you to think about what's holding me back. Why am I not taking a leap? Why am I, what am I afraid of? And, or if I woke up tomorrow morning and I was in my perfect job, what would that look like? So, you know, we kind of think of those things in passing, but actually sitting down and thinking about it, writing about it really forces us to, to think deeply about it. It's quite called a clear the fear. How do I clear that stuff? Wow. Um, that's, that's holding you back. The second stage then is understanding what is it that I want to do? And I call that build the map. So what is it that I want to do? What's important to me? Um, quite often we look as well at things like recency. So in, in my last job, um, I may not, for example, have liked my manager, um, but I might not have appreciated the fact that it was five minutes down the road. And so you forget, you kind of you think my new job, I want a really good manager. And then you find you're commuting two hours a day, you know, and that's, that's not helpful either. So it's looking at the big picture, all of the things that, that are important around culture, team, manager, benefits, um, fit, education, all of those things. And the final piece then is um, to bridge that gap between what is it that I really want and what, what are the, the gaps that I, that I need to fill to get there. So, yeah. And I've looked at your book and read most of your book and actually worked through some of those because yeah, I like the fact that it's almost like a, an exercise book for you to work through and write your thoughts in and takes you on that journey so that you come to a decision at the end, if you like, which I really like. Yeah, thanks. And that's about getting clarity because um, I think that's where a lot of people struggle is they kind of think they want something or I mean, so many people who say, God, I just need to do an MBA. And it's like, why? <laughs> you know, nothing against them. I have one. It's not, I, there's nothing wrong with it. But why would you jump into doing something like that without actually really doing the homework behind it first? Yeah. Um, I worked with a client recently, actually. And she, exactly that. She was like, I think I'll do an MBA because I want to get to the next step. Um, and it didn't take long. We kind of, we talk quite a bit about what is it that you really want and what's important. And do you want to get into the business side of things and do you want to lead people? And, and actually she really just wanted to learn about data analytics and she, cause she was very technical. Um, and she ended up, um, heading off to Madrid and studying there for 12 months, doing a master's in data analytics, which is a, such a complete shift. And mm. she's been delighted that that's what she's done, but it's, it's helping people not jump too quickly and get the clarity first, what it is yeah. that you're looking for. And then we have build the capability. Yeah. And like, just like you said before, leaders rush into filling a people gap. Often yeah. we fit rush into filling a job gap 
without really thinking about the long term what is this how does this link with us with our purpose our values so true. the shiny toy oh my god we've all done it's like oh <laughs> oh look there's a new job over here and it's like 20, paying 20 grand more than i'm getting here and but it's not it's not at all on your path it's not where you want to go and you know I, I'm, I'm working with a number of younger guys actually in their 20s who are a little bit lost at the moment um so it's just but you know they're both really enthusiastic and interested in, but they just don't know where to start and i think yeah. that's actually that's the case with a lot of people you know if you've been working 30 years in a job and suddenly that role has come to an end it's like where do you start how do you go about this who um, who can you talk to? What are the some of the tips around, you know, engaging with the right recruitment agencies? Do I just search on LinkedIn? There's just there's so much behind it. And while, as I say, a lot of the um, the book really is self reflective. It's really thinking. You actually probably have a better network than you think you do. Um, and what you think you you know uh, you might want to do may not actually fit with your purpose. And yeah. That can be I'm really kind good. of, I'm wishing that I had this, I don't know, you probably had the same experience, I think you're a little bit younger than me, but both overseas, um, the, uh, the careers officer at the end of school. Oh yeah. So, you know, so what do you want to be when you grow up? I really wish I had your book then to help oh. me work out what I wanted to be. I wrote about that actually in the book. You may have seen that the story is, is that what you're referring to? Oh my God. So I went to, um, obviously in Ireland. So it was a, well, not obviously I did go to a Catholic school in Ireland and with the nuns and, and it was really, I could either become a nun, an accountant or a hairdresser, but, um, you know, there were really only two people, two girls in the class who would have been smart enough to be accountants. The rest of us were just, you know, prone to do something that didn't involve actually studying any further really and it was so limiting um I mean to be fair I would have liked to have been a hairdresser to be really honest I love that idea uh, but that was that was a limit of the career officer's advice mm -hmm. which was just you know uh, there was no role for women um yeah in business or in any kind of progress at the time so yeah, yeah. we showed yeah. them like that's right, we did. <laughs> but it's awesome that now people have actually got your book that they can work through to find out actually what am I interested in? Because I think often we just get pigeonholed into a role, but it's actually what are you passionate about? I love the new generation where I'm passionate about making videos, I'm going to be a YouTuber. Good on you. Good you know, on if you've exactly. got a story and something that you can sell and do what you're passionate about, why would you want to be an accountant or have a job where you sit in an office? And, yeah. you know. and it's understanding your motivators and your drivers. Like not everybody's going to be motivated by money. Um, and it's far better to do something that you love, uh, yes. which is just such a shift. And, and I think it's never too late to start. I mean, it's only two years ago that I was working for a company of a hundred thousand people globally. And I went, left that to go out and work for myself. And so I went down to one. Uh, and you know what that's like. It's, you know, I don't know anything about it. I don't know um, anything about the systems and where is the person to write my comms and where's my, you know, my IT person when I need them, you know, and you have to learn all that, but it's never too late. And it's, there's too much of a fear. I think that people have, it's, you do what you were, you know, you started out with and, yeah. um, there's always time to, to move. And even if it's an opportunity, it's just one day a week, give it a try if you can afford to do that. Yeah. Um, just explore it. When you're talking about the scalable people as well, that could be something that puts people and leaders off scaling people. It's because I've never seen that person do that thing that I need them to do. Yeah. So would it be easier to just get somebody in that already knows how to do it? Yeah, that's true, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And and we sometimes do expect too much of leaders to be able to have that have those conversations or to even recognise that capability in yeah. people. Um, and that's so that's some of the work I do with them as well as it's just really simple templates to and prompting questions to give them the confidence to have the conversation. Yeah. And that's quite often all they need. And people just want want to be involved and want to have that opportunity to try something new try something different and yeah give them a go so how do people get in touch with you if they want to work with you lovely thank you so marybutler.net is my um my website at mary at marybutler.net is my email and i'm on marybutler underscore up on twitter 
um, because that's where scale ups and startups hang out. <laughs> it's a d different world. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that's mainly it. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much. It's been awesome to talk to you. Um, and thank you again for the generosity. And I look forward to scalable people adding to the library. And maybe I'll interview you again about the book again. Once it's oh, I look forward to it. <laughs> Thanks so thank much. Thank you so much, Mary. Take care. Thanks. Bye bye.